What's up, y'all? So, the title, it's totally true. Most days, I don't eat until around 6 p.m. So, in this video, we're going to go over my diet, how I modify things when cutting or bulking, how I set things up, and why I choose to eat this way. And we're also going to go over some common questions that I get asked about this style of eating. So, just to give you a brief overview of my day, first, I wake up. Hopefully, death joke. And I have coffee mixed with casein protein powder just to get in a nice little bolus of protein, get me uh, started for the day. And so I basically work on client stuff, content creation, planning videos, writing, all kinds of stuff from around 9 a.m. or whenever I wake up until around 2 p.m. Then I go to the gym, and my workout is maybe an hour and a half, sometimes up to two hours, but usually around an hour and a half. It's not something I time. I don't think how long you work out is really the most important metric of anything. During that time, I have a sports drink, and if I am bulking, I also have a liter of skim milk, possibly even whole milk, if I'm feeling frisky. So around 4 p.m. I finish with the training. After that, I immediately go walk for about an hour. If I am bulking, I will have about another liter of milk, skim milk or 1.5% or something like that. During the walk, I'll go to 7-Eleven, I'll get, you know, a liter of milk, I'll huck that down, I'll steal the KFC Wi-Fi. Those who know, no. I will then order food, I will walk home, I will pick up my food and I will arrive home anywhere from like 5 to 5.30 to maybe 6 p.m. Um, it just depends on exactly how long it takes to walk around. It's not something that I really worry about or try to micromanage. So my first real meal will be around 6 p.m. This is the biggest meal of the day. And then around 9 to 10 p.m., maybe as late as 11, I will have another meal. Uh, I try not to eat within like a couple of hours before bed just because that tends to disrupt my sleep to a noticeable amount. And I don't count calories, I don't count macros. If I'm bulking, I eat more. If I'm cutting, I eat less. No way. Yes way. But I tend to not micromanage my macros. I'm not against calorie counting or macro counting, however, and I do think there is a good amount of knowledge that can be gained from that experience. I counted for many years and I think I learned a lot from that. That now applies to my more instinctive style of eating that I currently use. Now, why do I do this? To some people I know this seems like a crazy system of eating. To me, this is just very normal and very natural and it's just been something that I have progressed towards over the past few years. I've never been a breakfast guy. I used to eat breakfast. I would wake up and not be hungry and I would think, oh, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. You gotta get in breakfast. Are you eating no? Breakfast, lunch, and dinners for beginners. You ain't eating no. Get, eat your Wheaties, breakfast of champions, all that bullshit. And I never really felt like I get got much out of it. And from a caloric point of view, eating when you aren't really hungry, to me, that didn't really make a lot of sense. I naturally have a bigger appetite in the evening. So I just find it makes more sense for me to shift more calories to that time. Also, when I'm working, I would rather not have to think about food or worry about food or spend time dealing with food or cooking or eating or any of that. And so I would rather just spend the first five, six, seven hours of the day working, focusing, concentrating, getting that out of the way. I'm much, much more productive when I do not have breakfast. Now for a few common questions that I get. The first one is, are you hungry? Honestly, no. Uh, I wake up, maybe I'm hungry for like five minutes, and then it goes away for the rest of the morning. Your body will react to food when it thinks it's going to get food. So if you're used to three meals a day, and you stop eating breakfast, and usually have breakfast, yeah, you're going to be hungry because you're used to actually getting breakfast. This is why you're typically hungry five to 10 minutes before you usually eat. So I might be hungry like before I get home. Why? Because that's when I usually eat. I usually eat when I get home around 6 p.m. So yeah, 5.50 or whenever, I might get a little hungry, but that's just normal. And that's something pretty much everyone experiences. Another question is, how does this impact your performance? 
It doesn't, okay? Weight training doesn't take a ton of energy or calories. It's really not using as much energy as most people think. I do train with pretty high volume, a lot of effort, a lot of intensity. But even then, I feel like I have enough energy. Your body has glycogen stores that are meant to be used for the purpose of activity and lifting and weight training, that kind of stuff. Um, and so I never really feel like I don't have enough energy. Plus, I am getting in carbohydrates during the workout. I'm well hydrated, micronutrients, everything on point, And therefore, just not eating breakfast or not eating before the workout, I never really feel like that impacts performance at all. But this is quite individual, and some people find that eating a full meal before training actually helps them considerably. So it is individual and you're gonna to have to experiment and see what system works for you this is just what i have found over time works best for me another question that i get asked is what is like the best window to use for intermittent fasting by the way this isn't fully intermittent fasting because i have the casein in the morning and so i'm not really strictly speaking in a completely fasted state it's just not getting in carbs and fats and a whole bunch of calories. It's just getting the protein in the morning and nothing else. But I get asked like, oh, is 24, is 16, eight? Uh, what about 18, six, all of these? Again, you have to experiment and see what works for you. I don't keep a strict eating window. It's not like I'm 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. Or, or 12 p.m. or something like that. And I'm sort of like, you know, I order my food and I'm just looking at it looking at my watch, looking at the food, looking at my watch, looking at the food. Oh my God, I'm counting the seconds until I can eat. No, I just fucking eat, okay? I don't think there's anything special about any particular window. I do think you wanna be semi-consistent. You don't wanna have like 20 slash four one day and then 16 slash eight another day. But if that happens, it's not the end of the world. If I have some kind of social engagement or something and you know, oh, it's, it's breakfast or it's lunch. At, oh, I have to eat at 1 p.m. Oh, my God. It's not the end of the world, okay? It's not like you, you fucking die if you eat a croissant. Another question I get is, is this healthy or is this unhealthy is usually how it is framed. Compared to what? Compared to a standard American diet? Skipping breakfast is unhealthy. SAD, where someone's eating three huge meals a day and snacking all day. Gotta keep my blood sugar levels steady. Lots of processed bullshit Frankenstein foods, not being active, not challenging their body, not getting in a vegetable since 1997. Okay, I haven't had a vegetable since 2004. Check these out. See these? See these boys? This is what I live with every day. I lather this up with keels in the shower. You wanna touch this shit? No. You wanna touch these bad boys? Sorry, not gonna happen. Is this unhealthy? No. I'm not gonna say breakfast is a big conspiracy theory or like the whole US government is out to get you. Uh, like, oh, it's a whole big plot to steal away your metabolic freedom or something. No, okay? This is just one way to set things up. If you wanna eat breakfast, feel free to eat breakfast. But if you're not hungry in the morning, I don't see the need to eat breakfast and I don't see why eating breakfast would be any healthier. As long as you're getting in enough healthy food, micronutrients, you're not deficient in anything, your calories are where they need to be, I don't see how skipping one meal is going to be particularly unhealthy. In fact, there are a lot of people out there who would probably benefit from skipping some meals. Another question I've gotten is, is this disordered eating? I would say it depends on how extreme. If you are really feeling restrictive by trying to do this, Maybe don't do this. I don't know. Crazy, right? Like if something, if a diet is super tough to stick to, maybe it's not a good diet for you. But for me, this is effortless. This is just something that requires no focus or attention. It is just something that is completely habitual and it allows me to get to my goals both physique wise, but also in terms of productivity and keeping everything in balance. I also get asked about bulking or cutting and intermittent fasting. If you can't fit your calories into the window, bring out the window. Okay, so if you're trying to do 24 and you're trying to bulk up and you can't get in the calories, you can add liquid calories, but you're probably gonna have to expand that window 
to 18.6 or 16.8 or some other mathematical equation in order to get in the calories. On the other hand, if you're trying to cut and you find it difficult to stick with that lower amount of calories than you want, I would say reducing the eating window might not be the best strategy because it just doesn't, it just doesn't work as well. You're probably going to feel like it's more restrictive and you're not going to find it to be as sustainable and you're almost certainly better off incorporating more satiating foods rather than just trying to squeeze down that window where you're actually consuming food. And so you really do have to know your appetite, know your goals, know when you're hungry, when you work out is a huge part of it. If you have any social engagements, how active you are throughout the day. There are a lot of factors that go into the style of eating that is going to be right for you. Again, this is just something that works for me and you're gonna have to find your own way. Don't just blindly copy what anyone else is doing. And for me, I really like the idea of being metabolically flexible. So I can skip a meal and it's not the end of the world. I also often get asked about longevity that might be a factor, but it seems to be mostly the caloric restriction and the weight loss that often accompanies intermittent fasting, not actually restricting the window of eating. There are some mice studies, but I don't think there's anything actually really, really concrete in humans. If there are, you know, drop a comment down below. I'd love to read about it. Um, but that isn't the main reason why I do it. It's mostly just convenience. Another thing that I get asked about is OMAD, one meal a day, uh, I think this is a bit extreme and certainly not optimal when it comes to muscle growth. You're going to want at least three protein feedings of around 30 grams or more per day. I would say that is your baseline absolute minimum when it comes to muscle growth. In a very real way, a missed protein feeding is a missed opportunity to grow. And I haven't seen any even halfway decent natural bodybuilder who was only getting in one protein feeding per day over a long period of time and saw robust muscle growth. So I would not recommend that. Uh, I'm not saying it's stupid. I'm not saying it's impossible, but I am saying for the vast majority of people, it's going to be extremely inefficient. Oh so yeah, that's about all. I realize to some people, this is going to seem really, really hardcore or extreme. To me, it's not. It's just, it's just, just how I fucking live my day. But uh, let me know if you have any questions down below. Happy to fill you in on any other details that I might have missed. Uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Definitely grab a copy of my book. It does not go into diet at all, but in terms of training, it has absolutely got you covered. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.